Wind Wicker's great sea is vast, with islands in friendly Hylians, and at first it seems harmless. Though, when the sun goes down and you hear the eerie sound of the still wind, you begin to see the darker side to this strange and dark ocean. What secrets lie out there? Well, today we're going to look at a couple of these strange mysteries. So without further ado, make sure to like the video and let's get into it. Our first one is a tale of a ship, though the weird thing about it is there's no people on the deck. Well, ones we can see, that is. You see, when the wind rages and the sky is consumed with a great storm, you know it's near. While very few have survived an encounter with this unworldly thing, we know that it is something very dark. It's known as the ghost ship. During Link's quest, he must track it down. When he gets close to it, he is then transported into the ship. And after defeating the enemies within it, he goes to the final room with a chest holding a broken piece of the Triforce. Now that in itself is strange enough, but there's one thing that is even weirder. You see, when getting close to the room, there's a face with a terrifying grin. Though when when you get closer, it turns into a face with no expression, no emotion, just, well, hollow. Is it simply to scare the player, or is it something much darker than that? From what we know, faces in the Zelda series hold the spirits of those who once were alive. Could that be the case with this same face? Something that used to walk the lands of Hyrule in the ancient past only to be trapped within a stone face? It seems like we'll never know. There are many islands scattered across the ocean, yet one stands out from the rest, as it is no longer an island but a group of rocks broken and plagued with a great storm, completely barren, void of any life at all. What happened here? Sometime before Link's arrival at the island, Ganon destroyed the Great Fish Isle, searching for one of the pearls which was guarded by the Great Fish Javan, who once resided here at the island. But what even was this island? And how did Ganon do this to it? And the most important question, who lived here? It's possible that the Zora, before they transformed into the Rito, lived on this island long before the flooding of the Great Kingdom of Hyrule. Yet, there's no doubt that whatever happened here is very strange. Ancient structures and unknown magical tribes are no stranger to the series. Yet, there is a place in the middle of the ocean that is nothing like we've ever seen before. A tower made out of ancient stone and alien-like markings. This is the Tower of the Gods, which legend has it was created by the gods, hence the name. A great, colossal tower meant to test a hero brave enough to set foot inside. One of those heroes being the one who would save the kingdom of Hyrule. During the game, you are required to conquer the trials set inside, meant to test the true hero. Once you get to the top, you must ring the great bell for the gods to hear you, signaling that that the hero of time has come, though no one truly knows the origins of the mysterious tower. It's clear that it was built in the time of Hyrule long before the flood, and because of that, we don't know much about it. As I mentioned earlier, it has strange markings covering it, which appear to be Sheikah. Inside the Great Tower, there are many trials, such as puzzles, dark nuts, and even a great boss, with a face and two hands, animated by some sort of dark magic. This tower holds many secrets that go back long before the time of Wind Waker. Yet, in my opinion, the Tower of the Gods remains one of the strangest things in the Zelda series. Now, we can all agree Wind Waker has no shortage of weird and quirky characters, one of them being a teacher on Windfall Island, who loves jewelry, especially joy pendants. And after you give her 20, she in return will give you a cabana in the middle of the sea, which at first it looks nice and welcoming, and it is. But if you go up to the door, there is what looks to be a 
butler carved into the door. Yet the strange part is someone answers. So from this, you would assume there's someone inside. But once you go in, you find it's empty. Yet with a cutout of the same butler on either side of the fireplace. Yet there's another eerie thing to this place. Because if you flip the lever hanging from the ceiling, the flame will go out, revealing a basement with sewage water and traps and puzzles laid all throughout an intricate network of tunnels. But that's not all that's down here. You can also find a broken piece of the Triforce. But why? Between that and the unknown voice, this is truly a cursed cabana. This final one is strange, and I don't just say that to make it more mysterious. There's no knowledge of what these things are. Let me explain. Darknuts are a famous enemy in the Zelda series. Giant warriors who have mastered the sword and also martial arts. But there's something else in this game that might be connected to these beasts the warships. The warships are small armored ships with a single cannon. They are scattered throughout the ocean, but there is one at Needle Rock Isle, which is gold and red. Yet all of these ships share something in common, a symbol that depicts the centipede, the same symbol featured on the shields of Darknuts. Not only that, but the horns are the same horns that Darknuts have. Is it possible that whatever these things are, and who whoever controls them has a connection with the ancient group of dark nuts. If so, were they around before the time of the Great Flood? But I guess we'll never know, and this is where it gets weird, because no one in the game is aware of their existence, almost like they're not real. Thank you so much for watching the video, if you liked it, make sure to go to the channel so you can check out all my other Zelda theories. But with all that said, I'll see you in the next 